Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over eight worked examples to show you how to do problems involving properties of stars. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says to calculate the power per unit area of the sun. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the power per unit area. We know that sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared per kelvin to the 4, which is Stefan Boltzmann's constant from the data sheet, and the surface temperature of the sun is 5,800 kelvin. So writing down our equation, we have power per unit area equals sigma t to the 4, substituting in our numbers, gives us 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 times 5,800 to the power of 4, and make sure you remember that power of 4, and putting that into your calculator gives you an answer of 6.4 times 10 to the 7 watts per meter squared. Question 2 says a star emits electromagnetic radiation with a peak wavelength of 6.8 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Part A says to use Wien's law, which is lambda max t equals 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3, to calculate the surface temperature of the star. Now it doesn't matter that this is an unseen equation, we're just going to use it to work out what t is. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find t. We know that lambda max is 6.8 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, i.e. our peak wavelength. And so writing down that equation, we have lambda max t equals 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3, where that value there is just a constant, a number. So substituting in our numbers, we get 6.8 times 10 to the minus 7 times t equals 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3. And dividing both sides by our wavelength, 6.8 times 10 to the minus 7 gives us t equals 4,265 Kelvin. Part B says to calculate the power of the radiation emitted by each square metre of the star's surface where the star is assumed to be a black body. Well, just like in question 1, we're trying to find the power per unit area. We know that sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per metre squared per kelvin to the 4, and our surface temperature from part A is 4265 kelvin. So writing down our equation, we have power per unit area equals sigma t to the 4, and substituting in our numbers, we get 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 times 4,265 to the power of 4. And putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 1.9 times 10 to the 7 watts per meter squared. Question 3 says to calculate the luminosity of the sun. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find L, the luminosity. We know the radius of the sun from the data sheet is 6.96 times 10 to the 8 meters. We know that sigma, Stefan Boltzmann's constant from the data sheet as well, is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter square per kelvin to the 4, and t, the surface temperature of the sun, is 5,800 kelvin. And that value is not on the data sheet, so you need to remember the surface temperature of the sun is about 5,800 kelvin. So writing down our equation for luminosity, we have L equals 4 pi r squared times sigma t to the 4. Substituting in the numbers, we get 4 pi times 6.96 times 10 to the 8 squared times 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 times 5,800 to the power of 4. So make sure when you put this into your calculator, you remember the square and the power of 4. And if you do that, you should get 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. Question 4 says to compare the luminosity of the star Sirius to that of the Sun, and it gives us some data. So we've got the surface temperature of Sirius is 9,940 Kelvin, and the surface temperature of the Sun, 5,800 Kelvin. The radius of Sirius, 1.18 times 10 to the 9 meters, and the radius of the Sun, 6.96 times 10 to the 8. So because we're asked about luminosity here, we're obviously going to be using the luminosity equation. First of all though, we want to let S denote the star Sirius, and let this circle with the dot in it denote the Sun. So this is going to be our notation as subscripts to help us differentiate between the different symbols. So what we're going to do, because we want to compare these, is we're going to divide our luminosities. So we're going to take the luminosity of Sirius and divide it by the luminosity of the Sun. So this is equal to 4 pi r s squared sigma t s to the 4, divided by 4 pi r squared sigma t to the 4 for the Sun. Now what you should be thinking at this stage is that there's quite a few things on the top and bottom of our fraction that can cancel out. So it's actually the constants that can cancel out. So the 4 pi's there and the sigmas can cancel out to give us r s squared t s to the 4 divided by r squared t to the 4 for the Sun. So what we can now do is plug in our numbers to try and get a value for the luminosity of the star Sirius compared to the luminosity of the Sun. So plugging in our numbers now, we get 1.18 times 10 to the 9 squared times 9,940 to the power of 4 divided by 6.96 times 10 to the 8 squared times 5,800 to the power of 4. And if you put that into your calculator, remembering the squares and the powers of 4, we should get an answer of 24.8. So if we write that in terms of LS by multiplying both sides by L for the Sun, we get LS equals 24.8 times L for the Sun. Or in other words, the luminosity of the star Sirius is 24.8 times greater than the luminosity of the Sun. 
Just a quick note that if you were given the luminosity values for each, you could be expected to work out the radius of the star RS using the same method, because remember we said in the theory video for properties of stars that the radius of a star can be determined via its luminosity, so if you're given values of luminosity you could work out RS. Question 5 says that a star has half of our sun's surface temperature and 400 times our sun's luminosity. How many times bigger is the radius of this star compared to the sun? Well, just like we did in question 4, we want to let S denote the star and let this circle with a dot inside it represent the sun. And we're going to do a similar thing to what we did in question 4 by writing the two luminosities as a fraction and then we'll see that some things can cancel out. So just writing down what we know from the question first of all though, we know that the luminosity of the star is equal to 400 times the luminosity of the sun, so I'm writing that in terms of the symbols here. And therefore we could write that Ls divided by L for the sun is equal to 400. And why have I written that as a fraction? Well, we'll find that this helps us out later on. And we can also say that the surface temperature of the star is equal to 0.5 times the temperature of the sun and that's because we're told that the star has half of our sun's surface temperature. So writing this in symbol form and again as a fraction we can write it as Ts over T for the sun equals 0.5. And lastly we want to find out how many times bigger the radius for the star is compared to that for the sun. So in other words we want to find out the ratio of the radii. So we've got Rs divided by R for the sun equals question mark. So that's what we're trying to find. So writing down our fraction for the luminosities we have Ls over L for the sun equals 4 pi Rs squared sigma Ts to the 4 over 4 pi r squared sigma t to the 4 for the sun and now because we know ls over l for the sun equals 400 and ts over t for the sun equals 0 0.5 we can just sub these things in so we have 400 equals rs squared over r for the sun squared times 0 0.5 to the power of 4 and what we've done is just like in question 4 we've cancelled out the constants from the top and bottom so the 4 pi and the 4 pi there cancel out and the sigma and the sigma there cancel out as well. So we want to find an expression for rs over r for the sun squared first of all and then take a square root. So getting this on its own we can divide 400 by this term here. So we get rs squared over r for the sun squared equals 6400 and now we take the square root of both sides to get rs over r for the sun which gives us rs over r sun equals 80 or if we write this for rs in terms of r for the sun we get rs equals 80 times r sun or in other words the radius of the star is 80 times bigger than the radius of the sun. Question 6 says to calculate the apparent brightness of the sun as seen from the earth and it also gives us a hint to remember that 1AU is the distance between the earth and the sun. Well writing down what we know from the question we're trying to find the apparent brightness B we know that L, the luminosity, is 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. This was actually the value of the luminosity for the sun, which we determined in example 3. So just imagine this is a sort of follow-on question from that. We know the distance between the Earth and the sun is 1 AU, which in metres is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 metres. Remember, it's handy if you remember that. And writing down our equation for apparent brightness, we get B equals L over 4 pi t squared. Substituting in the numbers now, we get 3.9 times 10 to the 26 divided by 4 pi times 1.5 times 10 to the 11 squared. Remember to square your term in brackets here in your calculator, and if you do that, you should get an answer of 1,379 watts per meter squared. Question 7 says that the luminosity of radiation from the star Sirius A is 9.7 times 10 to the 27 watts. Sirius A is 8.6 light years from Earth. Part A says to calculate the apparent brightness of Sirius A when viewed from the Earth. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find B. We know that L is 9.7 times 10 to the 27 watts. D is 8.6 light years, which we need to convert into meters. So remember to do that, we want a larger number. So we're going to multiply this by the number of meters in one light year, which is 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. So we get 8.6 times 9.46 times 10 to the 15, which gives us 8.14 times 10 to the 16 meters. And writing down our equation then for apparent brightness, we have B equals L over 4 pi D squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 9.7 times 10 to the 27 divided by 4 pi times 8.14 times 10 to the 16 squared. And when you put that into your calculator, remember to square this term in brackets and you should get an answer of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 7 watts per meter squared. Part B then says to calculate the surface temperature of Sirius A if it has a radius of 1.19 times 10 to the 9 meters. Well, writing down what we know from the question first of all, we're trying to find what T is, so we're probably going to use the luminosity equation because that has T in it. We know that L is 9.7 times 10 to the 27 watts. We know that R from the question is 1.19 times 10 to the 9 meters. 
Sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the 4 from the data sheet. And so writing down our equation for luminosity, we have L equals 4 pi r squared sigma t to the 4. Substituting in the numbers gives us 9.7 times 10 to the 27 equals 4 pi times 1.19 times 10 to the 9 squared times 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 times t to the 4. So we need to multiply all of this out and then divide this side by that result. To get t to the 4 equals 9.6 times 10 to the 15, and in order to get t on its own, we need to take the fourth root of each side, which is the same as taking the quarter power of each side. And the way to do this on a Casio calculator is to enter 4, then shift, then the root sign. And if you put this number into the root, you end up with a final answer of t equals 9902 Kelvin. Lastly, question 8 says that a star with radius 7.8 times 10 to the 8 meters and surface temperature 6300 Kelvin has an apparent brightness of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared. Calculate its distance from the Earth. Well, we first need to find the luminosity L, and then we can find what D is once we know that. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find L first. We know that the radius R is 7.8 times 10 to the 8 meters. We know that sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the 4 from the data sheet. T is 6,300 Kelvin from the question. And writing down our equation for luminosity, we get L equals 4 pi r squared sigma t to the 4. Putting in the numbers gives us 4 pi times 7.8 times 10 to the 8 squared times 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 times 6,300 to the power of 4. So putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 6.8 times 10 to the 26 watts for the luminosity. But we're not done yet, we now need to find the distance. So if we want to find distance, then we want to use the equation relating distance, apparent brightness and luminosity. So writing down what we know now, we're trying to find D. We know that B, the apparent brightness given in the question, is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared. L is 6.8 times 10 to the 26 watts. And writing down our equation, we get B equals L over 4 pi D squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1.8 times 10 to the minus 8 equals 6.8 times 10 to the 26 over 4 pi times d squared. So to get d squared on its own on the left hand side, we can cross multiply, which is the same as swapping this with this. So if I take the d squared over only, and then divide this side by this, then we end up with d squared equals 3.0 times 10 to the 33, and taking the square root of both sides gives us d equals 5.5 times 10 to the 16 meters. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.